Hi everyone, welcome back. In this session we're going to look at the derivatives of trigonometric functions. Uh, just to give a bit of a summary of where we, we are so far, we're looking at quick methods for finding derivatives of functions. So we've looked at polynomial functions. How can we find their derivatives quickly? And that involved the power rule on each of the terms, but we can write those down really quickly now. What about exponential functions? Well, we found that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. We looked at the product rule and the quotient rule, which tells us how can we compute the derivative of, let's say, a product of two functions, where we know each of the individual functions and their derivatives. How can we piece those together to get the derivative of the entire product? That was the product rule. We also had one for quotients, which was a quotient rule. So we're starting to build a collection of differentiation rules, really quick ways to get derivatives. And we're now at the point where we're going to look at the trigonometric functions. What are the derivatives of sine, cosine, tangent, et cetera, et cetera? Okay, so let's start with our first question. What is the derivative of the sine function? So here we've got the sketch of the sine function, y equals sine of x. And I just want to get an idea from the graph what the derivative should be. I mean, we can, we can really take any function and get a sketch of its derivative. Um, to give us an idea of what the derivative looks like. Our ultimate goal is to find uh, explicitly what is the function that is this derivative, but we can get an idea of what its graph has to look like. And so the way we do this is we can start with a bunch of points on our original function, which we can easily spot what the derivative is. These are places where the derivative is zero, horizontal tangent lines. And so these are going to be places where the derivative crosses the axes. So right now I'm sketching the graph of y prime, the derivative. What else do we have? Well, we know that you know, as I move along, the slopes of the tangent lines get more and more negative, and then they turn around and start coming back to zero again. So the graph has to get negative, 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 and then slopes of the tangent lines or the derivative has to go to zero again and then they'll get slopes of the tangent lines or the derivatives will get more and more positive and then come back to zero again. So it looks like this and then they come back to zero again and it sort of continues on in this fashion. Right? The, the sine function is 2 pi periodic so its derivative also has to be 2 pi periodic so it looks something like this. So it's a rough sketch, a rough sketch of what it looks like. Um, we can use a graphing utility to get an even better view of this. So here I've got in blue my sine function, and I've plotted a little tangent line here, and we can read off its slope. Its slope rise over run is 1, so that means we plot a point. So the red point is a point on the derivative. It's of height 1 because that was the slope of the tangent line. So as I move across, the tangent line slopes, or the derivatives, go to 0. So the derivative function has to head towards 0. And then it becomes negative, and then heads back to 0, and then positive, and then heads back to 0, and so on. So we see that we kind of get the same shape as the sine function, only shift it a little bit. What is the graph of, or what function is this the graph of? Well looks like the cosine function. If we plot the cosine function, we see it exactly lies on top of the cosine function. So this adds some evidence to the suggestion that, hmm, what is the derivative of sine of x? Well, it looks like the derivative of, oh, I'm writing cosine in the wrong spot, looks like the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. That's what it looks like. That's what we had down here. This looks like the graph of y equals cosine of x. Okay. Now this isn't uh, a rigorous argument that shows the derivative of sine is cosine. It's just we're just playing around here with the idea of a derivative and looking at these graphs and seeing what sh what should a possible candidate for the derivative of sine actually be. And we see that well, a good candidate for it, at least what the graph is suggesting that it should be the cosine function, which seems to suggest that there's this really deep connection between sine and cosine. We know they're related because they are really the x and y coordinates, cosine is the x coordinate and sine is the y coordinate of a point on the unit circle. We're seeing that are actually even more deeply connected through their derivatives as well. Okay, so we're going to verify this 
But I just wanted to play around with this a little bit first to get an idea of what maybe the derivative of sine of x should be. We're going to verify this, but the only thing we have to verify that this new function, the sine function that we haven't dealt with before in terms of derivatives, that its derivative is really cosine of x, is to go right back to the definition. We've got to go right back to the definition of derivative and verify it there. Okay, so let's have a look at a list of all the various trig functions and their corresponding derivatives. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about this list, how to see some patterns, because we're going to have to know, and that's what it says here, we're going to need to know all of these derivatives by heart. So if you have them at your fingertips, you're working on any example, you should know immediately what the derivative of cosecant is, or what cotangent, derivative of cotan, or the derivative of sine. We're going to need to know these. But I'll talk a little bit about some memory aids on just how to remember these things. Um, so the first one, turns out that yes indeed, our, our graph didn't lie to us, it, it made a good suggestion and the suggestion turns out to be true that the derivative of sine of x is indeed cosine of x. It turns out that the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. So these two things here are sort of a pair. You know, sine and cosine are related to one another, they're intimately connected in that each one of them appears as the derivative of the other one. Uh, with the, the sine appearing in terms of the derivative of the cosine function in terms of sine. What we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to prove these. By using the definition of derivative. Okay, The definition of derivative, that is using that limit, the limit as h goes to zero of the difference quotient. We're going to prove these two. Now, once we've proven those two, it turns out that we don't have to go and use the definition of derivative to prove the rest. We can actually prove these from these first two. So these first two are really important. They're the ones that are going to form a basis for getting all these differentiation formulas for the rest. Why is that the case? Well, let's just think about what the tangent function is. The tangent function is sine over cosine. And if I know the derivative of the sine function and I know the derivative of the cosine function, I can use the quotient rule to get the derivative of the tangent function. That happens for the rest of these as well. Let's just recap what each of these functions is defined to be. Secant is 1 over cosine. Cosecant is 1 over sine. And cotan is the reciprocal of the tangent function, which is cosine over sine of x. And in fact, for all of these ones, maybe I'll move my arrow down, for all of these ones, since they are ratios or quotients of the sine and the cosine functions, we can prove these differentiation rules using the quotient rule. Okay, so we're going to focus on proving these first two, and the first one in particular, using the definition of derivative, and then once we've done that, we're going to look at a number of examples where we use the derivatives listed here to work out derivatives of various other functions. And then we're going to come back to this notion of a limit and look at the limits of some functions we couldn't compute before, but now we can because a part of the, the, the tools that we developed to find the derivative of sine and the derivative of cosine are going to be some special limits that are useful to add to our toolbox, and then we'll see how those help us to evaluate other limits involving trig functions. So we've got three things to do. Prove the derivative of sine is cosine using the definition of derivative. Do some examples involving the derivatives of various trig functions that we've listed here. And then come back to limits of various functions involving uh, sine and cosine. So those are our three things. Now I've mentioned that you must know these. And there are some connections that you can make. So it's not just a matter of memorizing a list of six derivatives uh, isolated. They, a lot of them have some similarities. So first of all, derivative of sine and cosine. Those ones you absolutely must know. For, remember those. The reason I did the diagram on the, on the previous slide to suggest why the derivative of the sine is cosine is so that if ever you forget it, you can always think, well, if I sketch the graph of sine, draw the tangent line, oh, it looks like the cosine function. There it is. Got the derivative of cosine. So that was more in tune with trying to give you a, another memory aid as to why the derivative of sine is cosine. It wasn't a rigorous argument, but it will help you in a pinch if you've forgotten what the derivative of sine is. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. You can do the same sketch and, and get that result. Uh, 
The derivative of 10 is secant, the derivative of secant is 10. I've paired these together because, well, each one of them involves the other one in its derivative. They seem to be intimately connected. Tangent involves the secant in its derivative, secant involves the secant and the tangent in its derivative. That also happens with cosecant and cotangent. And notice there's even more of a similarity here. Tangent involves secant squared in its derivative. If you go down to the reciprocal of tangent, which is cotangent, it involves cosecant squared. And these ones in the middle are also similar. Derivative of secant is secant tangent, derivative of cosecant is cosecant cotangent. Now you may say, well, but they're not exactly the same because there's these negative signs cropping up. And okay, so there's another level that you have to remember. You have to remember these negative signs and where they appear. They appear in three of them. Um, can you see a quick way to remember where the negative signs appear? Have a close look. So there's a negative, there's a negative, there's a negative. Look at the trig functions they come from. What's the first letter of all of those trig functions? Yeah, they all start with C. So of, of all six trig functions, there are three that start with C, and those three are precisely the ones that have the negative sign appearing in its derivative. So there's a, a number of different layers here that you can remember, uh, used to help you remember what the derivatives are. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the first thing we want to attack, proving that the derivative of sine is cosine using the definition of derivative.